20, verses 1 through 13. The Israelites, the whole congregation, came into the wilderness of Zin in the first month. And the people stayed in Kadesh. Miriam died there and was buried there. Now there was no water for the congregation, so they gathered together against Moses and against Aaron. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Would that we had died when our kindred died before the Lord? Why have you brought the assembly of the Lord into this wilderness for us and our livestock to die here? Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to bring us to this wretched place? It is no place for grain or figs or vines or pomegranates, and there is no water to drink. Then Moses and Aaron went away from the assembly to the entrance of the tent of the meeting. They fell on their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the staff and assemble the congregation and your brother Aaron, and command the rock before their eyes to yield its water. Thus you shall bring water out of the rock for them. Thus you shall provide drink for the congregation and their livestock. So Moses took the staff from before the Lord as he had commanded him. Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Listen, you rebels, shall we bring water for you out of this rock? Then Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock, rock twice with his staff. Water came out of it abundantly, and the congregation and their livestock drank. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust in me to show my holiness before the eyes of the Israelites, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land that I have given them. These are the waters of Meribah, where the people of Israel quarreled with the Lord, and by which he showed his holiness. Let us pray. <coughs> Oh, 
plan God had promised, they began to murmur and to complain. Instead of believing the promises of God, they were overcome by the difficulties they encountered. Did you notice, like I did, and the Israelites complained, and the next chapter, God, or the next paragraph, God was angry. And the Israelites complained, and God was angry back and forth, back and forth, the entire, the entire time. Finally, rebellion and a spirit of mutiny took root, and the people began to form what is now known as the Back to Egypt Committee. <laughs> they would get rid of Moses and get a new leader who would take them back into the bondage of Egypt. These are the kind of people who, who say things like, told you so, I was never for this newfangled way of doing things. Now, all we've got is this heartache and trouble. Besides, never did it this way before. <laughs> that kind of amen almost there on the show. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Even though if we were to travel today, the present journey across the wilderness of Sinai would take a near 45 minute flight from Cairo to Tel Aviv, and the world is astoundingly different than it was in Moses' time. And yet, the human spirit hasn't really changed much at all. Do you know anyone on the Back to Egypt Committee? Perhaps you're the person sitting as the chair of the Back to Egypt Committee. Now, most of us have been known to complain from time to time. But true veteran complainers are never, ever happy. Instead of rejoicing in gifts that they have received, they complain about games they didn't make. <coughs> Good things happen, we're not looking at the good, we're looking at the bad. When bad things help happen, they tell you that they knew it would be this way. Sometimes you can almost swear they are unhappy to see people happy, or they are happy in their own unhappiness. Here's another aspect to people who make up the back to the and it's rather dangerous because their spirit is contagious. Have you ever noticed how much easier it is to be negative? Hang on to your seats to campaign for the next presidential election, right? There will be complaining. There will be criticizing. There will be condemning. More than ever. And the funny thing is, is there will be complaining about the complaining. Nothing will actually have changed. Why? Well, as one political consultant put it, mudslinging works. Negativity sells. You can gather way more people to protest than to praise. Negative, unhappy, complaining people can bring any committee, any task, a group or workforce, or dare we say it, even churches to grinding halls. On this day in which we honor our graduates and their bright futures, I want to issue them, as well as us, each a warning and a challenge. Your stars are bright indeed with passion and commitment to leading God's call that is within you. Hope and joy you have right now. I see it glowing in your faces. I pray it carries you not just into the next chapter of your lives, but into several chapters forward. Be aware of the Back to Egypt Committee who comes along and tries to make you doubt yourself or lose your passion or steal your joy. They are there. They are there. Use them as a means to grow your passion and do the work that God has planned for you. Use those people as proof of what you are trying to do through teaching or nursing or whatever God has planned for you. That is what you need to be doing in order to better our world. And so, I challenge you to use the Back to Egypt Committee as fodder for doing what actually needs to be done. But I also 
market. That kind of negativity is really catching. It's an easy trap to fall into. Once you catch that negativity bug, it is easy to stay down with it. And it's not so easy to come out. And you also can bring others down with you to come on the complainer's path. And again, it's pretty easy to do. The difference between complainers and challengers is that complainers stay in their negativity, while challengers can identify a problem, not dwell on it, and instead try to make a positive impact on the community to which you belong. Many of you know, as part of our, our church's 100th anniversary celebration, we decided to do something big for our community. So we partnered with our brothers and sisters at First Christian Church to rehab a home for Kyle Malone and her two children. Many of you also know that 10 months into this project, we've had quite a difficult time working with a disorganization of the leadership of this chapter's habitat community of Howard County. If you haven't heard, any one of us on that team could give you an earful about what's been going on there. I've even joked that I feel like I'm one of the Israelites grumbling in the wilderness with such negative taste in my mouth at this point. But my point in telling you this right now is to not sit on the back of Egypt committee, but rather to say that sometimes there are things worth complaining about. I think the Israelites' hunger and thirst in their mind's eye worth complaining about. If there weren't things that are worth complaining about, then the world would never change. And we know that's not good. It is what we do with the opportunities for change that challenge us. So we have been challenged with this Habitat for Humanity Bill. We have struggled. And yet, you've even heard me complain about it. But the thing is, there's really only one thing that matters to me in this whole project, that Kyle and his two children get into that house. I sure would like the project to be finished when my baby is old enough to begin volunteering there. <laughs> <laughs> I know others agree. Wouldn't you give an amen, Ron and Tanya? Yes. But at the end of the day, the solid foundation of home ownership for a single mom who serves her community as a preschool teacher, that is what I keep my eye on. That is the land of milk and honey. God's frustration with the Israelites was understandable because they kept losing sight of their goal. Important things like food and water, God wasn't trying to deny them of this importance. But God wanted them to talk to him about it. God took care of them and led them into the land of milk and honey. But over and over again, they lost their focus and began complaining. Church today, we know the difficulties we face in trying to bring the hope of Jesus Christ into a hurting world. It is easy to get settled into that Back to Egypt committee with that issue alone. But as a people of hope, we need to keep our eyes always on the goal, especially when things get tough. We need to keep our eyes on the goal of guiding our brothers and sisters into the land of milk and honey. Let us pray. God, place upon our hearts the difference between complaining and challenge, or complaining and opportunity. As we look at the Israelites, may we remind ourselves that we are not that different from them. Grumbling in the wilderness is changes all around them. May we focus our trust and our hope in you. And when things get difficult, may we keep our eyes 
on the goal that is sharing the love of Jesus Christ. Give us the courage and the strength. We pray in the name of our Savior. Amen.